When you visit Sri Lanka's south coast, you'll notice these guys, the stick fishermen. This style of surf fishing is unique to Sri Lanka and has been going on like this for centuries. Today, they've kindly granted me the permission to borrow a stick, so the pressure's on to make a good go of it. So far, so good. Certainly doesn't feel stable. I'm kind of caught. All right. No one man owns any stick in particular, but various villagers control certain areas. When we used to drive down this way, my dad, we always tried to buy these hooks off these guys, but they never sold them to us and never showed us a secret. So I do truly feel very, very lucky. Oh. Now I'd be even lucky if I can catch one of these suckers. As the schools of herring patrol the surf hunting shrimp, we stick fishermen run tiny silver lures through the schools. Sounds easy, but there's a technique. I just need one fish. Come on. Now, if I was in Fiji, I'd get one of the old fishermen to say a prayer for me. I'm just saying a prayer just to try and stay on this bloody stick. There they are, there's heaps. Come on. Got one. <laughs> ah, yes, I've got a bit of cred with the lads on the sticks now. Well, what an experience that was. I'm still a bit, a little bit sore, but uh, the prize is great. These fantastic herrings, and I'm just going to do a simple dish here by the seaside of crispy fried herrings with a lovely salad. First thing you've got to do is clean these little fish. I keep the heads on these because they're tasty and because we're frying them crisp, it's going to be lovely. Then all you have to do is just cut the belly and then grab the gills and the whole lot will come out in one go. Very simple. Wash them off and that's it. I'm just gonna get some oil on, and I'm having a go at a wood fire. Hard to control the heat, and we're working with hot oil. So be very, very careful. If this does catch fire, I'm just running, all right? While that gets hot, I'm gonna prepare my salad. Just have onions. The funny thing about smoke, no matter which way you set yourself, it follows you. I'm slicing these onions really thin, but leaving them large. Crush them up and put them into the bowl. Lots of chilies. Make it nice and hot. But the green chili gives it that great flavor as well. I'm still so exhilarated by that fishing excursion I just did. You know, my dad just always tried to get those hooks. I said it while I was out there, and they just never sold them to us. And now to have the opportunity to actually go out there and catch a fish, amazing. OK, lots of chilies. Some tomatoes, and slice them. They'll look nice through the salad. Sort of cross-section. Lime. A cucumber. Into that I'm putting some pepper. And some salt. Nice and fresh. But just to add a little bit of Sri Lanka to it, I'm adding some Maldive fish as well. 
it adds a really nice flavour. It's been pounded, ground really nicely. So little flakes just make it beautiful. Now with the fish, what I'm going to do is give them a bit of flavour. Some salt into that. And I've got this roasted curry powder that Nyana made me. It's a combination of all these beautiful spices and it'll give it a wonderful flavour as well. Lots of black pepper. And I'm going to put a little bit of flour just to crisp them up. Mix that up together. Be gentle with the fish too so that they don't get damaged. But cover them up with all these great flavours. A little bit of lime as well to add a bit of acidity. And check the oil. Great thing about this fish is you can eat it all. The head, the bones, the tail, and that's why you need to get it nice and crisp. Got the fire going really hard now. I don't want it to soak up any oil. I want it to be crisp and the flesh inside to be nice and white. But more importantly, see that? They're, they're hard now. They crackle when I put them into the pot. This is my plate for the day. And my salad now is really well marinated. It's gone through beautifully. OK, my garnish is going to be some fried garlic. I love garlic this way. You can eat lots of it. It's good for you. So just to get the oil and the flavours inside, I've just broken them up and left the skins on. I'm just going to crush them. Chilies and smashed garlic. When you're cooking chilies, you don't want to burn them. Garlic is ready. A little bit of salt. Stir it around. All right, here comes the end. Yum. What I've got is hot, sour, crunchy, fresh, and light. Nothing more you could ask for in a place like this. Maybe a beer. A short distance east of our stick fisherman is Hambantara. Like most of Sri Lanka, Hambantara has a fantastic veggie market and Saturday morning is the best time to buy your supplies. I'm at the jackfruit stand. This beautiful fruit is probably Sri Lanka's favourite food. It comes in many different ways. When it's ripe, you just eat it like a fruit. When it's green like this, it gets chopped up and you make it into a, a malum or a salad. The seeds themselves are also fantastic to eat. In the early days, it was the best wood to make furniture out of, but now, because it feeds the nation, you are not allowed to cut the trees down. So uh, very important. I'm not going to cook it today, but I will later on. What I am going to cook is something that everyone can get their hands on. Let's get cooking. I've got heaps of food here. I'm going to cook a beetroot curry and a snake bean curry. This curry looks so good. 
It should be an accompaniment with lots and lots of your curries. And beetroot is such a versatile vegetable. Okay, it's about half a kilo of beetroot. So once all your beetroots are chopped, I'm gonna add onion, chopped up really nice and fine, some garlic, some chili, pandan, and some curry leaves. Now into this chili, I like it hot. Some coriander powder. Of course, a bit of salt. And mix that up well. Add some cinnamon, beautiful little bunch of cinnamon that I picked up in the market here. I'm just gonna start cooking it, it's quite easy. Ghee, I love my ghee. Now while that's heating, I'm gonna start on the next stage, which is my snake beans. Just break them into little pieces like that. And the beans are snapping, I like it. So see how I'm preparing one thing while the other one's happening? Curries, you can cook quite a few at a time. This just needs to cook until the onions are a little bit translucent. All right, the beetroot mixture with all the spices goes into it. And add my other two ingredients, which really make this. First is sugar. Sweeten it. And then next is vinegar. Let that go for a little bit longer. I'll get onto my beans. So, chili. This one doesn't need as much chili. Some coriander. Some fennel seeds. Some turmeric for colour and flavour. Some fenugreek seeds. And some cumin powder. I'm going to do the Sri Lankan thing, add a little bit more chilli. And of course salt. That basically just gets added together and I'll cook it in a second. Okay, now I've got the second extract of coconut. Now that goes in and I'm gonna swap because that'll take probably, I don't know, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, but you've just gotta keep testing it. Gotta keep testing, make sure that the beetroot's cooked through. Next, I'm gonna use some oil. Okay, so chili. Onion, which I'll just chop up finely. And with this one, you can see that I've basically put everything in together, so it's just gonna be flash fried. There's not gonna be a huge amount of frying of onions or anything like that. I also need curry leaves. Curry leaves fried. They just want to get everything to caramelise and fry around. Now with this one, I'm basically stir frying it and I'm not going to boil it for too long. So I want to try and get the beans half cooked. Because after that, I don't really want to take it any further once I add the coconut cream. I don't like to cook the vegetables too much. It's nice that they hold their colour and they, they look really good. But we're at a stage now where, you know, 10 minutes later, I've got two curries well on the way. Beetroot is reduced right down. Don't forget that we still have the first extract of coconut to go. So that'll kind of bring it all together. Okay, we're nearly done. Just gonna bring that back up to the boil, let it all get together, reduce it down a little bit. It's ready to serve. In a situation like this, with the beach close by, it'd be a really nice light lunch with lots and lots of flavors. Down here on the south coast, tourists flood in for the usual sun, sand, and indulgence. 
surfing just hasn't taken off yet. Last time I was here, I met the local crew. They are really talented surfers, but between them, they only have a few old boards. The fact is, decent boards are just too expensive and hard to find. Hey, Chatu! Good man, how are you? I brought you boys some presents. Nice. I hope these ones are a bit better. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. Yeah. A pleasure. I hope it won't be too much longer before Sri Lanka has a vibrant surf industry. In the meantime, all the more waves for us. Serious surf etiquette is yet to kick in here. It's kind of like surfing's friendly frontier. So as the sun sets over Vijaya Beach, I'm going to cook the ultimate seafood barbie of crabs in ginger chilli shallot sauce, marinated prawns in curd, and fish fillet in black pepper sauce. Now I've been looking around the markets, I've found heaps of great food. I'm gonna start by making lots and lots of sauces for it. First one's ginger chilli shallot sauce. Start with a little bit of sugar, because I don't have mirin. And water, sugar water, some wine, which is kind of hard to get in Sri Lanka, so it's nice to have. Put all your liquids in first. It's important because you've got lots of solids there and they need to be chopped up. So I'm going to use just red chilies quite sparingly. Shallots, spring onions, whatever you want to call them. Garlic, about 10 cloves, a really nice, good flavour. Sesame oil, you've got to be careful with sesame oil. Sesame oil is one of those really strong flavours. It just needs a slight hint. Soy sauce. sweet chilli sauce and the sugar will actually help caramelise this and all I'm doing with this sauce is blending it. Now what I'm going to do, in Australia we use mud crabs but I came across these fantastic blue swimmer crabs, fresh and just wonderful. Small, they're a little bit fiddly. People don't like to play with fiddly food, but I think when you're eating crabs, it's all right. Steam the whole dish. The sauce is ready, and I'm just gonna add it to the crabs, put a lid on it, and it's out of the way. So now these beautiful tiger prawns that I picked up at the market today, we're gonna use some dried chili, some curry leaves, which will give a really good flavor later on, some ginger, a little bit of fish sauce will give that saltiness to it that you need, and some oyster sauce to sort of bind it and, you know, make it lovely and delectable. And also, when you cook it, it'll caramelise a little bit too. And some green onions. Don't just put it on straight away. Roll it around in it all, and then put it aside. And later on, I'm going to introduce the curd to it, so it'll finish it off really nicely. A black pepper sauce, you don't want to be frying anything. You want everything to be cooking together and all the flavours sort of coming out of it. So some ginger, a little bit of fish sauce, some sugar, garlic, lots of garlic, soy sauce, and again, a little bit of oyster sauce. But the main ingredient, Obviously, it's a black pepper. And the black pepper needs to be added in fair amounts, and then curry leaves. And this sauce now really just needs to bubble up. What will happen is the butter will sort of separate, it'll boil up, cook it all beautifully. The idea with this sauce is to slowly bring it to the boil and let it all macerate together. And within probably 20 minutes, we'll have a really nice sauce. I'm gonna barbecue this beautiful 
spangled or red-throat emperor. So, a little bit of oil on my barbecue. Let the heat come up, let the fish cook, let it seal on one side before you even think about moving it. Next thing I have to do is put my prawns on. Now they're wonderfully marinated and ready to go and I'll just place them on one at a time. My next stage for the prawns. Look at that yogurt. Beautiful. A little bit of salt. It's got a bit of salt in it, but add a little bit more. Some large chopped shallots, some green chilli, and of course, some garlic. And then stick my prawns in and give them a good roll around. My black pepper sauce has reduced right down to this lovely thick sauce. The crab, serve them so that they're all hanging out of the plate, looking really nice. My black pepper sauce is caramelised and really tasty, and that's going over the fish. Lots of sauce and juices coming out of it. And I think that, with some rice or maybe some salad, would be absolutely perfect.